Poetry, it has been argued, is the essence of the human condition, and if we take a look at the historical context of the art form, it's pretty clear how this assertion came to be. Poetry has been around in one form or another for nearly the entire length of modern human history. It's pretty safe to argue that poetry acts as both an indicator of where we've been and of who we are now. Originally, poetry was used as a method of communication and education, discussing such things as history, genealogy, and law. Because it was mostly oral, poetry can be said to actually predate the concept of literacy, as reading and writing wasn't actually invented yet. Some of the first recorded accounts of poetry come from as early as 3000 BC Sumer, or modern-day Iraq, with a lamentation on the death of Tammuz, the shepherd god. The oldest surviving written poem that we know of is the Epic of Gilgamesh, which tells the story of a mighty king going on great adventures. The earliest versions of this were written sometime between 2150 and 2000 BC. Eventually, humanity started to migrate south towards the Mediterranean, and poetry followed, establishing itself in what we call ancient Greece, or what they just called Greece. At this point, poetry was still primarily an oral tradition, though the poems were becoming shorter and more personal, usually accompanied by a lyre, which is a stringed harp-like instrument. From this, we get the term lyrics, which literally means words sung by a lyre, which shows the connection between poetry and music as we know it today. This was also the time of Homer, who between 850 and 800 BC composed the epic poems the Iliad, which tells the story of the Trojan War, and the Odyssey, which tells the story of Odysseus' journey home after the Trojan War. These were essentially what we would consider to be the Lord of the Rings films of the time. Coming legends. <laughs> Patroclus, my cousin. Odysseus, king of Ithaca. Patroclus, I knew your parents well. I miss them. Now you have this one watching over you, eh? Learning from Achilles himself. Kings would kill for the honor. Naturally, humanity didn't just move south, but east as well into Asia. And by 701 AD, the poet Li Po, or Li Bai, had gained prominence as one of the greatest Chinese poets in history. That said, just as the different environments led to different cultures, so too did the poetry differ based on where we were at the time. Whereas the Greeks wrote of epic adventures and mighty heroes, the Chinese were more pastoral, focusing on things like nature and the human experience. If Homer was the Michael Bay of poetry, think of poets like Li Bai as the Wes Anderson of poetry. Poetry in these cultures became an effective tool of relating stories, history, information, and entertainment. They were sung, read, recited, and any way a poem could be delivered, it was delivered. That being said, it was still primarily oral. As the centuries passed, a new and Bregonian language took poetry to a new level of literacy, the printed word. That language, of course, was English. English poetry has been found as early as 970 AD in the form of the Exeter Book, a collection of early religious and pastoral poetry. And around 1000 AD, the first English epic on par with Homer is translated into Old English, Beowulf. I am Ripper, Terror, Slasher, Gouger. I am the teeth in the darkness, the talons in the night. Mine is strength and lust and power. I am Beowulf! This is all well and good, but there was still one big problem with writing poetry and putting it into books. Very few people could actually read. Literacy was still a privilege of the nobility, and even then it was written in the Old English vernacular, a form that the common person didn't actually use. By 1387, a man named Geoffrey Chaucer decided to change all that, and became the first person to publish poetry in the more common vernacular of Middle English, intending for everyone, and not just the elite, to enjoy his work. This revolutionary work is known as the Canterbury Tales, which involves a group of pilgrims sharing stories during their stay at an inn. The Heath Ledger film, A Knight's Tale, is very, very, very loosely based on this. Lords! My ladies! And everybody else here not sitting on a cushion! Today, today, you find yourselves equals! Now, as human history can often be broken up into distinct eras of development, so too can poetry. And between 1280 and 1300 AD, the period known as the Renaissance was occurring in southern Europe, primarily Italy. 
It was a time of great revolution in all facets of society, particularly in science and art, including poetry. Around the 16th century, this movement made its way towards Northern Europe as well. In England, the Renaissance marked a revolutionary time in the advancement of poetry, and it's where a lot of our modern beliefs of what, what poetry is was formed. Things like meter, rhyme schemes, stanzas, and verse, things like that. Famous poets of the time included Edmund Spencer, who wrote the epic Fairy Queen, Thomas More, who wrote the classic satire Utopia, Christopher Marlowe, the author of the morality tale Dr. Faustus, and of course, William Shakespeare, who wrote a few things here or there. As is often the case with the development of human history, the pendulum of advancement eventually swung the other way, and by the mid-18th century, the Industrial Revolution was in full swing. Industry and scientific reasoning became more and more prominent in society, and as such, poets and artists had to change as well, although here they acted as a counter, and the movement known as Romanticism came to be. The Romantics were made up of some of Western culture's most prominent and well-known poets and musicians. Beethoven, Chopin, and Mozart were active at the time and came into prominence with their musical works. In terms of poetry, many critics believe this time to be when the art reached its most beautiful and artistic zenith. Whereas in previous eras, as well as during the Industrial Revolution, poetry and belief had been centered around specific rules and form, the Romantics let their imaginations run wild, writing about nature, love, the supernatural, anything their imaginations could contrive. Great works of literature like Frankenstein and Three Musketeers and Jane Eyre were published, and the poetry of the time was characterized by these six major poets. Once again, civilization moved, this time across the ocean to the Americas, and while it started by echoing its British heritage, its poetry too eventually found its own voice. Writers like Emily Dickinson and Walt Whitman led to Robert Frost, Maya Angelou, and Margaret Atwood, who paved the way for Simon Armitage, Carol Ann Duffy, Bo Sia, and Reggie Gaines. As humanity grows and evolves, so will poetry continue to grow and evolve. And to paraphrase George Santayana, those who do not remember the past are doomed to forget it. So it's important to know that just how far poetry has come, so we can appreciate not only the art, but ourselves as well. <laughs>